Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a nice equation with complex numbers. This equation could be considered non-standard because we have a mixture of a linear function and an exponential function and they're being added to get zero. Is this possible at all? We have z and e to the power z and their sum is zero. So we're going to look for the z value that satisfies this equation. All right, let's see how we can do it. So I want to go ahead and actually use a special function for this problem. What is that special function? That special function is called Lambert's W function. Lambert's W function is denoted with a capital W, which is what we usually call W instead of F or any other function. We're just going to call that W and W of t to the t is equal to t. In other words, the inverse of w is t to the t. So w is the inverse function for this function. Make sense? You can kind of replace them. Now, so this is a very special function, which is also called the product log. If you're going to enter this into Wolfram Alpha or any other calculator, I think Wolfram Alpha accepts product log, but you, just, you have to make sure it's one word no spaces. And then you can kind of even specify the branch if you want, kind of like zero or one. And what are some of the branches? Because this function doesn't have a unique inverse, we kind of have to consider different intervals, which are also called branches. So product log of basically t to the t is going to be t. But what is the product log of x? We don't know. It depends on x, okay? And it's kind of like calculator. How, what is the square root of 2? 1.4 something. Do I know exactly? Yes, it's the square root of 2. So you can kind of uh, refer to this as the exact answer using the w as our function. Anyways, let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem. There's probably a couple different ways to go about it. One way that I can see is doing e to the power of both sides. Let's go ahead and do e to the power both sides, this is going to be e to the power that equals e to the power z. Now why am I doing it? Because this is going to give us 1 and then we're going to get something interesting. e to the z multiplied by e to the e to the z equals 1. Now if you look at this problem or the Lambert's W function, look back, you wanted an input of t e to the t. Did we get that? Yes. If you call this t, then you got it because this is going to be your t as well. So we have the structure, the format t, e to the t. Awesome. What is next? w both sides. If you w e to the z times e to the e to the z. By the way, why did I write it as a product? Because the exponents are being added. Make sense? Okay. Now, we have this on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have w of 1. Now we can go ahead and apply w on the left hand side that gives us e to the power z equals w of 1 and then from here we can ln both sides z should be ln w of 1 right okay that's basically one way to approach the problem i'm also going to show you the result from wolfram alpha okay cool let's go ahead and take a look at the second approach the second approach is different because because we have zero we can separate these and put them on different sides let's go ahead and keep the z here and set it equal to negative e to the power z and then my goal is to bring these two together so i can make something like z e to the z can i make that no not really but we can get close how multiply both sides by e to the power negative z and then you should get the answer, so let's space it out a little bit. And now we have multiply by e to the negative z and e to the negative z. Great. So now on the left hand side, I got z e to the negative z, which is kind of close to t e to the t. We'll get there. And here, these two cancel out, leaving us with negative 1. Awesome. What am I going to do next? I want to make my t's agree. Notice that in the expression t e to the t, they have to be the same thing, right? So, how can I make them the same? This is negative z, it's not going to change. So, I can multiply both sides by negative 1 
and turn this into a positive one. And now we are ready to Lambert, I mean W, both sides. And then this will give us something like this. And then when I apply W, it should give me negative Z equals W of 1. And from here, Z should be negative W of 1. Wait a minute. Why did I get two different answers? That's a good question, right? That's something that I want you to think about. Ln W1 and one, with one method we got Ln of W1 and with the other one we got the opposite of negative W1. Or are they the same? Okay, that's for you to find out. Now I'm going to show you the result from Wolfram Alpha which I think is going to be pretty surprising. So remember what we found about this and then Wolfram Alpha tells us that, oh, there's an equation, yay. The solutions are, wait a minute, are they real? They should be, look, because we have an intersection point. Obviously, this graph intersects the x-axis or the z-axis, whatever you want to call that. Yes, we have a real solution. And the real solution is given by this, which is something that I found with my second method, right? But is that the same as the value from the first method? What do you think? Because it was ln w of 1, right? So the question is then, is this equal to negative w of 1? In other words, can you, put, can you prove this? That's what I'm asking about, right? And if you wanted to look, look at the numerical value, the numerical value would be something like this negative 0 0.567, so on and so forth. And if you look at the graph carefully, you're going to realize that the solution is actually between negative 1 and 0. Okay? So this is something that I want you to think about. But let me give you a clue. You could probably put these on the same side and then do something to eliminate the ln. What do you do to eliminate the ln? Just remember the inverse function for ln. So should I give you the first step? The first step should be adding w1 to both sides. You're going to get w of 1 plus ln w of 1 equals 0. That kind of looks like our equation, right? Wait a minute. What do you mean by that? Anyways, let's forget about what I said, but try to get uh, prove this identity. Is this an identity or did I make a mistake by following the first method because I think what we found with the which one was uh, agreed with the yes the second one so the first method was something different which was ln of w1 it didn't agree with Wolfram Alpha anyways this is for you to find out and this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe I'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye